Hello friends, I'm here today. We are at Ashray Bangladesh Chapter Booth at Sebo Expo. I would like to share some basic information on building decarbonization. As you know, Ashray is the leading organization in the world for creating standards and guidelines for all kinds of developments for HBC system, indoor environment quality, energy efficiency, lighting, ETC and now focusing on building the government. We all know about global warming and climate change. And the main reason for global warming is carbon emission or greenhouse gas emission. So if you understand this uh, GT emission a little more, building are the significant source of GT emission or carbon emission. The buildings we live or work in are responsible for roughly 40% of energy related CO2 emissions. The global building stocks is expected to double by 2060 due to organization, population growth and related economic trend. So just imagine what would happen with all this establishment or infrastructure built to accommodate these additional requirements and what will happen to that? carbon emissions or gel emissions. So we really need to think and prepare for this situation. So that's why I'm talking about this building decommodation as an essential for several reasons. I'm just going to give you some reasons and explain a little bit why it is essential. Building decarbonization has so many benefits. I would like to describe a few of them. Climate change mitigation. Buildings are a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, primarily due to their energy consumption for heating, cooling, lighting, and operating various appliances. Also, use of water, use of air condition, refrigerant, those all add up to GHG emission. By decarbonizing buildings, we can significantly reduce carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions, which are the primary drivers of climate change. Global commitments. Many countries have committed to reduce their carbon emissions as part of international agreements like the Paris Agreement. Achieving these commitments requires substantial reductions in emissions from all sectors, including the building sectors. That also include the new building and existing buildings. Energy security. Relying on fossil fuels for heating and cooling buildings makes societies vulnerable to fluctuations in fuel prices and supply disruptions. Transitioning to renewable energy sources and increased energy efficiency improves energy security by reducing dependence on finite fossil fuel resources. Health and indoor air quality. Building decarbonization often involves improving ventilation and air quality, which can lead to healthier indoor environment. This can result in fewer respiratory issues and other health problems associated with poor indoor air quality. For poor indoor air quality, we have a very bad situation with COVID-19 because our indoor air quality was not maintained properly. So if we have a better indoor air quality, we'll have less impact from respiratory disease like COVID in future. Economic benefits. Building decarbonization can stimulate economic growth by creating jobs in industries related to renewable energy, energy efficiency, construction and technology. Retrofitting buildings and adopting clean energy solutions can drive innovation and boost local economies. Energy cost savings. Energy efficient buildings consume less energy, leading to lower utility bills for occupants. Over time, the cost savings from reduced energy consumption can outweigh the initial investment in energy efficient technologies. With my experience, I found that in Bangladesh uh, and few other countries that I did uh, green buildings, we can save 
15 to 25 percent of energy that been used right now by doing the proper energy audit and finding uh, the loophole and also mitigate those findings. Long-term sustainability. Decarbonized buildings contribute to the long-term sustainability of urban areas and communities. They help reduce the ecological footprint of cities, promote cleaner air and water, and create more reliable and resilient environments. Innovation and technological advancement. The pursuit of building decarbonization drives research and development in clean energy technologies, smart building system, and sustainable construction practices. This fosters innovation and the development of new industries. Also, innovation of the new materials for the buildings. Global leadership. Countries, cities, and companies that take the lead in building decarbonization can establish themselves as a pioneer in sustainability and gain a competitive edge in the global market. As we all know, Bangladesh fashion industry went for LEED certification or green building certification. Through that process, it is also part of the decarbonization process. We gain huge momentum in sustainability practice in Bangladesh. And now we are the leading country in the world to have green factory Matter of fact, 50% plus of the world factory, green factory, are in Bangladesh right now. Interconnected benefits. Building decarbonization often has cascading benefits. For instance, the adoption of energy efficient technologies and practices can improve building resilience, reduce energy demand, and reduce strain on energy infrastructures. Community well-being. Sustainable buildings and communities can enhance the quality of life for residents by providing comfortable living spaces, access to green areas, and reduced pollution. In summary, building decarbonization is a critical strategy for mitigating the impacts of climate change, enhancing environmental quality, fostering economic growth, and ensuring a more sustainable and liable future for current and future generations. To understand decarbonization, there is some method that we have to explain. Ashai put together a guideline for that. The first issue of decarbonization guideline has been published. One, building decarbonization encompasses a building's life cycle, including building design, construction, operation, occupancy, and end of life. Two, building construction, energy use, methane, and refrigerant are the primary source of GHG emissions. Three, building life cycle assessment involves consideration of operational and embodied emissions. Four, carbon dioxide equivalent, CO2e, is the standard matrix to quantify GHGs. Now I'm going to explain number three one more time. Building whole life cycle emission include operational carbon is the amount of carbon emitted during the operation of a building. This includes both energy and water related emissions during the use of the building. Embodied carbon is the amount of carbon emitted from the abstraction of raw materials for the building to the building's end of life, including refrigerant emissions. It is everything in the life of build, the building that is not covered by operational carbon is covered by embodied carbon. So when you talk about building decarbonization, we have to consider both of these carbons, uh, operational carbons and embodied carbons into the consideration. Now, I would like to introduce you a step-by-step -step process that I put together for these purposes from my experience. Here it is. Step one, assessment and planning. Energy audit for existing buildings. Conduct a through energy audit of the building to assess building's energy consumption, 
equipment, system and operational practices. Understand the building's baseline, energy performance and potential area for improvement. And that is for the existing building. For the new building, we have to do analysis for new buildings, conduct an analysis of the design to identify inefficiencies, emissions resources, and analyze the buildings in block, HVC system, lighting, indoor air quality, appliances, and energy sources. So we do it through a lot of different kind of simulations of the design to see how passive that design is, how efficient that design is, and how that design helping each other to get the best performing buildings. Then we have to do data collection. Gather data on energy use, building characteristics, equipment, system, and operational practices to understand the building baseline energy performance, occupancy patterns, and local climate conditions. And that is for the existing building. And with all those information, we have to set goals and target. Define clear decarbonization goals, such as reducing energy consumption, transitioning to renewable energy sources, and achieving specific emissions reduction targets, a percentage reduction in carbon emissions, or achieving specific energy efficiency standards. So we have to set a goal to go through the process and go to the step two. Now the step two is energy efficiency improvements. First, envelope improvements. Upgrade and enhance insulation Optimize window to reduce heat loss and gain, seal air leaks and doors to improve the building thermal performance. Efficient lighting. Replace traditional lighting with energy efficient LED or other high efficiency lighting system. Use touch lights where possible. Automation of lighting. Incorporate daylight sensors, motion sensors, occupancy sensors, three level switches, ETC to reduce energy consumption where applicable to improve lighting efficiencies. HVC system optimization. Retrofit or replace HVC system with more energy efficient model and implement advanced controls for better system management. For existing building, HVC upgrades. Install energy efficient HVC systems such as heat pumps and ensure proper sizing and zoning for optimal performance. Plug load management. Implement strategies to reduce energy consumption from appliances and electronics. Also select and use energy efficient machineries and equipments where possible. Step 3. Electrification. Electrification strategy. Develop a plan to transition from fossil fuel based system to electric alternative for heating, cooling and Cooking, heating and cooling. Replace fossil fuel based heating and cooling system with electric alternatives such as heat pumps. Water heating. Transition from gas powered water heater to electric heat pumps, water heaters if it is available. Step 4. Renewable energy integration. Renewable energy. Assess the feasibility of on site renewable energy generation such as solar panels or wind turbines, determine the appropriate capacity based on the building energy demand. Solar panels. Install photovoltaic solar panels on the roof or other suitable location to generate on-site renewable electricity. Wind power. If applicable, consider wind turbine for renewable energy generations. Geothermal system. Explore geothermal heating and cooling system options that use the earth heat to regulate indoor temperature. Decarbonized heating and cooling. Step 5. Heat pumps. Install air source or ground source heat pumps for efficient heating and cooling without direct emissions. District heating and cooling. If available, connect to district energy system powered by renewable sources. Technology integration and building system optimization. Smart building technologies. Implement building automation and energy management system to monitor and control energy uses 
in real time. Demand response. Integrate demand response capabilities to adjust energy uses during peak demand periods. Step 7. Passive design and natural ventilation. Solar design. Optimize building orientation and design to maximize natural heating and cooling. Natural ventilation. Design for natural air circulation to reduce resilience and mechanical ventilation. Step 8. Retrofitting and retrofit planning. Retrofit strategy. Develop a comprehensive retrofit plan considering financial feasibility, energy savings potential and occupant comfort. Equipment upgrades. Replace outdated appliances and systems with energy efficient models as part of the retrofitting plan. Step 9. Green building materials. First, low carbon materials. Choose sustainable and low carbon materials for renovation and construction. Recycle and recyclable materials. Prioritized materials with recycled content and those that can be recycled at the end of their life cycle. Step 10. Smart building technologies. Building automation. Implement building automation system to control lighting, HVAC and other systems for optimal efficiency. Energy management. Deploy smart energy management platform to monitor and optimize energy uses in real time. Step 11. Behavior changes and occupant engagement. Education and training. Educate building occupants about energy efficient practices and encourage their active participation in reducing energy consumption. Also water consumption. Policy and incentive. Step 12. Government support. Advocate for the leverage government incentive, rebates and grants for energy efficient upgrades and renewable energy installation, energy codes and standards. Implement and enforce stringent energy codes and standards for new construction and retrofits to ensure that buildings are designed and constructed to high energy efficiency level. Step 13, collaboration and policy support. Government support. Advocate for policies and incentives and regulations that promote building decarbonization and support the adoption of clean energy technologies. In Bangladesh, there is so many government support for uh, green building process or decarbonization process such as sustainable financing and support for the solar energy industry collaboration. Collaborate with industry experts, organizations and stakeholders to share knowledge, experience and best practices. In Ashray Bangladesh chapter, we are exactly doing that. Step 14, monitoring and continuous improvement. Monitoring. Continuously monitor energy consumption, indoor air quality and other relevant metrics to track progress towards decarbonization goal. Data analysis. Analyze monitoring data to identify trends, anomalies and area for further improvement. It's a continuous process. Interactive approach. Based on monitoring and analysis, refine strategies and technologies to optimize energy efficiency and carbon reduction. As just expert notes, the process of building the decarbonization is not a one-size-fits-all approach. Each building will have unique characteristics, challenges and opportunities. It is essential to tailor the steps to the specific needs and context of the building and to regularly assess the, and adapt the strategy as technologies and practices evolve. ASHRAI, as a leading organization of professionals and experts, is taking the leadership on the subject. ASHRAI created and continuously creating building decarbonation guidelines, technical resources, and providing expert support to achieve global carbon and GG mission targets. ASHRAE recommendations are followed. To support global building decomposition, 
Ashray recommended that government and non-governmental is to focus on the following areas. Number one, research standards and guideline development. Number two, improve design and equipment application. Number three, workforce development. Ashray, first building decarbonization guideline is published and is available in Ashray website www.ashray.org you can go and download that and you can also become Ashray member to get continuous support on guidelines, technical support and also expert support. We have so many resources in Ashray that can help you to go through this journey with building the Convention, which is very, very important for us to have a better climate and also for our future generation. Thank you very much for the time. Hope to see you. Thank you.